Is Snap set up for success? Hello, everybody. This is Stocker Finance. I'm your host, David Scheuer. Make sure to follow me on Twitter at Stocker Finance for more information. If you want to support the channel, it is patreon.com slash Stocker Finance. All right. So first off in the Snapchat update, uh, kind of a mini analysis video, we're going to be reviewing a couple articles here that I found super interesting. Um, and then we're also going to go ahead and dive into some fundamentals just to give an update on this company. If you've been watching this channel for a while, I've known that I've consistently done Snapchat analysis videos. I'm, pre I'm, a, I'm pretty bullish on Snapchat as a company and its stock. Um, but let's just get into the fundamentals here before we move on to those articles and before we get into some other interesting topics today. So the first thing we're gonna look at is the daily active user count, continued growth. Uh, as of last quarter, the last time it reported, it was up about 17%, I believe, maybe a little less than that, I forget the exact number. But as you can tell, we've had significantly more steady growth in the past few quarters since about uh, Q1 or actually Q4 of 2018. Since then, we've had pretty consistent daily active user growth, um, not just from one segment of the world, but from North America, Europe, and the rest of the world, um, all kind of, you know, the, North America takes up about a third, Europe daily active users takes up about a third, and the rest of the world combined takes up about a third. One thing I've noticed, though, and some of these articles mentioned as well, is there's a lot of expansion that Snapchat has not taken advantage of yet. Yeah, it's largely been operating in North America, as well as in some parts of Europe, but the rest of the world is combined into just a third of this chart here. That's a huge percentage of the population um, of the world that is not even aware of Snapchat or doesn't have Snapchat or doesn't isn't using it at all um then snapchat definitely needs to expand into those areas um, i'm not sure exactly which areas those are i would like to get a more detailed chart or graph of that exactly where uh, snapchat users are located besides kind of a broad you know like europe is a pretty broad place what exact countries in europe and uh you know same with north america which states are using it the most or whatever uh, just down to more a detailed analysis there i would like to see that in some form Anyways, let's go on to revenue here. You see revenue continuing to climb as well. Uh, it took a little bit of a beating this last quarter since advertising was down significantly. So many restaurants, so many stores that might advertise on Snapchat had to close down. There's a big advertising debacle. Facebook took a big hit. So it wasn't just Snapchat that suffered last quarter. And actually, they didn't really suffer that badly at all since they still grew year over year that quarter uh, in terms of their revenue. Uh, and daily users and pretty much uh, every metric there but they did take a bit of a hit with the advertising luckily for snapchat though most of their advertisers right now that i've seen are mcdonald's uh sports i think the biggest hit that they took was movies i've noticed that movies consistently are advertising on snapchat there's a lot of inner entertainment uh sports as well that advertise on snapchat for you know upcoming big games or big events whatever it might be and because of those events were all shut down uh, sports were basically completely shut down across the board for a while there although they're starting to come back uh, in, in pretty good full force serves in the nba comeback we've seen the nfl come back as well mlb almost every sport has come back although they still don't have a live audience um, movie theaters are still suffering movie releases have been delayed substantially so that's definitely hurt snapchat's revenue a little bit but it wasn't uh, you know detrimental to snapchat's success or it didn't shut them down during that time it's not going to hurt them in the long run and as they, you know, as everything kind of comes back to normal, I've definitely been improving slowly over time here, as, as far as I'm concerned, at least. There could be, a, you know, big second wave. Who knows what's going to happen with the whole situation here. But it does seem like things are getting a little bit better. I've seen restaurants start to open, some rules loosen up a little bit. And as it goes back to normal, eventually, that'll help Snapchat uh, tremendously, especially since it's gone through this whole situation uh, with increased daily usage, as well as increased engagement. So people are going to be using Snapchat. They're going to get hooked on Snapchat. Or they're going to be, you know, first find it since they want to talk to their friends since they haven't been able to see them in a long time and snapchat's going to become a daily part of their lives so when we return back to normal advertising spend returns back to normal i think snapchat will benefit greatly in the long run if we look at revenue and operating income on this chart and this is hypercharts.co by the way the website i'm using for this if you want to check it out it's super awesome so we see revenue as we just looked at with steady growth there gross profit as well and then operating income is a bit of a different story um it was kind of trending in the right direction for a little bit there and then it kind of turned around with more increased spending on r d etc you can tell with net income it kind of did a full little full ue here u-turn 
started going back down, which is not exactly what I wanted to see because before they're really on a trend, it seemed like to profitability. And although I do think eventually they will achieve profitability, right now they definitely uh, just, I think a lot of this was due to the advertising situation, losing a lot of advertisers last quarter. On top of that with some increased spending, but we'll take a look at that in a second here. If you look at operating expenses, you see that uh, R&D increased as well. So R&D increased there. I think that definitely was part of the reason for net income. Uh, turning that UE, you're also gonna see that the margins have decreased a little bit, but not drastically. We see sales and marketing staying the same, general administrative as well. Uh, you can, nothing you can really change there. I think that's perfectly normal. Nothing too scary though, nothing too alarming when you look at these financials, especially for a company you know that's you know not profitable yet. It's definitely interesting looking at its financials. But when you look at the R and D spend, I mean that's you know what is that? That's two hundred and about fifty million dollars of R and D. I don't, I mean, that's a lot of R&D. Now, I don't know exactly you know what they're including in R&D. R&D could just be, you know, simple little Snapchat updates that requires, you know, tons of engineers, employees to operate, etc. But I think that's a lot of R&D spend and I don't see Snapchat, you know, revolutionizing the world with $250 million a quarter in uh, research and development costs. So although they are spending a lot of money on R&D, I would like to see a little more than what's going on here. Maybe a new platform, maybe they release a whole new app or some really cool feature rather than like these, these minor bug fixes or minor developments that definitely is not worth $250 million. So let's look at the margins here. Now their gross margin is really fantastic, around 50%, and their operating margin and profit margin, obviously they're negative right now since Snapchat is not yet a profitable company, but they are trending upwards towards that 0% mark and eventually a positive profit margin, operating margin. And although I don't think it will happen this year in 2020, I don't think it'll happen in the next two quarters, within the next 12 months, so maybe Q2 of 2021, or even eventually at 2022, I do think Snapchat will eventually reach profitability and will have consistent profitability as it increases and attracts more advertisers and ad spend through its really unique advertising form. No other company or social media platform advertises like Snapchat does with kind of this augmented reality, uh, the face filters, um, you know, uh, geotags, all these different things that Snapchat has invented and been able to do that, you know, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, how they advertise is really just while you're scrolling through, you see a random video or rather, rather a random advertisement pop up on your feed. With Snapchat, they advertise in a super unique way. And because of that, advertising on Snapchat is extremely effective, especially when you're dealing with uh, youth and younger generations who tend to spend more money or who these ads tend to work on better. So we've seen when you look at the data that Snapchat's ads are more effective than those traditional ads. And because of that, they're gonna attract a lot more advertisers. They're gonna get a lot more ad spend on their platform, especially as their daily active users continues to increase, their engagement continues to increase. I think this is a great time for Snapchat right now. If we look at cash flow, it's doing well as well, uh, increasing towards positive eventually, uh, at least it's trending that way as of right now. Not too much to say about capital expenditures, but it has decreased over time, which is nice to see. We also see operating cash flow uh, hopefully turning positive in the near, near future as well. We look at growth, it's a bit all over the place here. Uh, we see operating expenses you know, increase rapidly right there during Q4 of 2019, most likely a huge spend during that time. We see revenue year over year growth kind of slow down, kind of be volatile. And then this most recent quarter, both of them plummeted as this whole situation was very unique with, you know, again, advertising spending slowing down, not as many advertisers wanting to advertise or able to. Operating expenses decreasing as well. Most likely um, they shut down their offices or something like that, which would make a lot of sense. Maybe had a layout a few workers who knows what it might have been for a decrease in operating expenses but when there's less spending when there's less work to do operating expenses go down no surprise there i would expect that to recover to a more normal and healthy trend in the coming quarters the situation is just extremely unique right now now let's talk about these articles here so the first one we're going to look at that i think is probably the most interesting out of all these articles is someone who's extremely bullish on snapchat uh, similar to you know i am very bullish on snapchat and if you disagree with me i would love to go ahead and see your reasoning in the comments below so make sure to comment that below i love having discussions whether you're criticizing my video or my analysis or whether you agree with me whatever it is i love any sort of comment like that so the first point he makes here for why over the next 12 months snap stock will remain powerful and while will, while the stock price will hopefully increase is that their near-term growth trends for the of the social media platform are highly favorable i kind of touched on this a little bit 
uh, with increased advertising spending, usage, growth, etc. Number two, the long-term fundamentals underlying Snap are as favorable today as they've ever been. Uh, I agree with that as well. I think there's some parts like the margins we saw, growth as well, uh, net income. I wouldn't say that's highly favorable by any means, but hopefully it returns to trending in a higher favor highly favorable direction. Um, Snap, uh, sorry, sorry fumbled my words there number three snap stock remains relatively undervalued and should be able to take out the 30 dollars level by the end of 2021 now i'm not going to give an exact price point here it's really hard to say that this company is undervalued when it's not making any money it's worth billions of dollars you know hasn't actually generated a, a net income or a net profit at the end of the day here and it's been around for quite a while so i don't know about undervalued necessarily but if you're looking at the intrinsic value let's say a few years from now or comparing it to other companies uh similar to it, other social media companies similar to it you could say it is relatively undervalued or at least um undervalued compared to those metrics um saying it's relatively undervalued is kind of a weird thing i always feel a little uncomfortable saying this company is undervalued or saying any company that's not making money is undervalued because in reality well it you know if it's not making money if it's you know its assets are worth more than its uh, liabilities i believe but yeah, it's definitely an interesting term there, but I get what they're saying. I think in the future, if you're pricing in the fact that Snapchat will be profitable in the near far future, then perhaps it is relatively undervalued today. I don't know the exact price point of what it will reach by the end of 2021. I'm not going to make that claim. Now, let's move on to the next article here, and I'm just going to read through this whole thing. I'll try to link these articles below if you want to read them in more detail. I just thought they were really well written about Snapchat. So, for uh, he's just going over a little uh, why Snapchat is increasing in favorability among him as well. Uh, the, the author here. So the first one is, for a variety of reasons, there have been a noticeable exodus from the ultra popular short video app TikTok over the past few months. As a short video app itself, Snap's user base and engagement should increase among this exodus. Indeed, Snap's app download trends remain strong over the past few months with a noticeable uptick in September. And that's true. I think TikTok is starting to die out a little bit, to be honest. I think part of that is because Instagram or Facebook released a competing uh, software called Reels. So Reels is basically exact cop. It's a classic Facebook move, you know, classic Zuckerberg move. Takes something from another company, another app, copies it, copy and paste it literally to their own app, and boom, bada boom, they take users from them. They've done it with Snapchat, with Snapchat Stories. They basically did TikTok with their entire app. It's called uh, Instagram Reels, and I've seen that a lot more on Facebook. Um, there's pretty much I haven't seen. They're not. They're actually promoting it pretty significantly on the Explore page on Instagram. If you use those uh, apps, if you use Instagram at all, you might have noticed this. On top of that, TikTok's just facing a lot of criticism. Um, you weren't allowed to download it for a while. I don't know if that's still in play. A lot of politics involved that are driving people away from Snapchat. I wouldn't be surprised if parents aren't letting them, their kids use TikTok anymore. Uh, I think I accidentally said Snapchat there. I meant to say TikTok. But yeah, anyways, let's move on here. So Snap recently released a new user face. Uh, while this was met with some criticism, as most updates to apps are, this new design will promote greater user interaction with some of Snap's more valuable value added, uh, additive features that were previously hidden in the old interface. This is, uh, includes Maps and Discover, which I think is very interesting. I actually think Snapchat would be interesting to add a routing thing similar to Google Maps or Apple Maps. So they could just use Snapchat, just all in one app. You could route yourself somewhere, or you could route yourself to your friends. So you can see all your friends on Snap Maps. If you don't have the app, basically you can blow up a little map and it'll show all your different friends and where they are on the map, which is really cool. You get to know where your friends are, what they're doing, etc. Sounds a little creepy, but it's kind of handy um, if you need to find them or if something's going on, whatever it might be. It'd be cool though if you could actually route to them and go directly to them. Let's say if they're in kind of a weird location that Google, Google, uh, you know, Google Maps or uh, Apple Maps doesn't really work for. Well, you could just route right to them. Um, I think Snapchat could add that in. I'm not, you know, I'm not a computer scientist by any means or a, a computer engineer, but I'm not exactly sure how hard that would be to implement. But I think that would be a unique feature that they could implement. Discover has also been a little weird, but I think they've uh, taken advantage of that. And I think this new UI will uh, help that. So given that these two value additive and differentiating features are now easily accessible through an always on bottom bar, I see this update as providing a meaningful uptick to overall user counts and engagement time on Snap. Snap has been aggressively improving the functionality of its ad business, and I spoke about this a little bit, including a global rollout of Dynamite ads in July. The product allows brand to, brands to automatically create ads in real time using advanced Snap tools. Further, the company is testing a novel ad feature dubbed Platform Bursts, which allows brands to burst high-frequency, high-reach ads. These ad functionality improvements should attract more advertisers and bigger ad budgets, providing an overall boost to the company's revenue growth trends, which is always a good thing for a company that relies on ads for revenue. 
Meanwhile, Snapchat's international expansion opportunity is huge. About 27% of North American internet users use Snapchat every day. Only 10% of European internet users use Snapchat every day, and just 2% of internet users everywhere else use Snapchat every day. This discrepancy indicates that Snap has a huge opportunity to dramatically increase its international user base. I 100% agree with that. I think they need to, um, whether they're, they're not advertising right, whatever it is, or, or they're relying on word of mouth too much, they really need to get more of the rest of the world using Snapchat every day, um, engaging with Snapchat. And at the end of the day, a lot of people see Snapchat as a social media device. That's not really how I view it. I actually view it as a communication app. So, you know, Snapchat, the whole point of it is you get to snap, send pictures with words to your friends. You can also text your friends. I know a lot of people, especially um, in the younger generations, like I'd say high school, middle school as well, those age groups, they use Snapchat as their primary source of communication with friends. So they no longer are just texting, asking for people's numbers. In fact, even in college today, with a lot of my age group, going up and asking if, let's say, you know, I'm gonna go ask a girl for her phone number, it's actually almost a little cliche and a little uncomfortable, I've noticed. So instead of doing that, you go say, hey, what's your Snapchat? Really easily just scan a little code on your phone, boom, bada, boom, got their Snapchat done. If you don't ever talk to them, you can at least view their story, get to see what's up with them. Um, and you can send pictures, so there's no more you know, miscommunication over text. For example, if you send the word okay over text, it can mean a million different things. But if your face is with the text that you sent, because it's a picture with you know text over it, well, it's a lot more easy. It's, it's a lot harder to miscommunicate uh, the meaning of what you just sent. So that is one big benefit to Snapchat as a communication device versus regular texting. And with the younger generations, um, I see it as they're basically their primary source of communication. And I think they need to implement that and advertise that further in other parts of the world rather than just North America and a small portion of uh, uh, European users. Let's continue on with the article here. Perhaps more importantly, recent research shows that ad recall rates among the company's core youth demographic are higher than in any other demographic. That bodes well for Snap's ad business. Moreover, Snap's average revenue per user rate today hovers at around $2. Twitter's is $6, while the ARPU of Facebook is nearing $10. So Facebook has an incredibly, incredibly high, especially compared to Snapchat, uh, it, you know, it's five times higher than Snapchat's revenue per user. Uh, you know, Twitter's is, uh, you know, significantly higher as well, about three times higher. So Snapchat definitely has some uh, improving to do in attracting more advertisers, especially when its re ad recall rates among the company's core youth demographics are significantly higher than any other demographic, which is really good for Snap's advertising business, as this article states. So clearly then, Snap can greatly improve the monetization of its platform. It's attempting to do so by improving the functionality of of its app every as we read a, a second ago let's continue on here with another article those who are bearish on snap stock emphasize the fact that its daily active user base came in slightly below the average estimate and this is about the last quarter results by the way but the daily average user count increased 17 percent year over year and as i've noticed in the past user growth is not an, not the end all be all for snap Although user growth is certainly good for the company, higher engagement levels on their own can improve the company's financial results, causing the shares to climb further. Speaking of higher engagement, Snap reported some strong data on that front. Uh, the average number of Snapchatters watching shows rose by 45% year over year, and those over age 35 engaging with Discover content was up 40%. The latter data point shows that Snap's that the app's appeal is, as I previously predicted, uh, spreading beyond young people. I expect that trend to continue and intensify as millennials who grew up with Snap continue to age and as information about Snap spreads to more middle-aged people throughout advertising and word, word of mouth. Finally, on average, users opened up the app over 30 days last quarter, showing that the overall engagement is fairly strong. So yeah, I've said this a ton of times, you know, it's really, really strong in the youth demographic, but a lot of those people, especially at my age, who grew up with Snapchat are now in college or graduated, they're still using Snapchat because what they've relied on for communication, they enjoy it, they've used it for a long time. And they're spreading that to some of the older generations who maybe are in the 30 year old range who they're now working with at work who are co-workers whatever it may be the younger generations are still adopting snapchat so the age of users for snapchat over 35 i think that's going to keep growing as the you know original og users of snapchat that age group continues to grow up and as the new users continue to adopt it and grow up as well 
So moreover, as I pointed out in this previous columns, most upper middle class and wealthy consumers are dealing quite well financially during the pandemic. Consequently, I expect Snap's advertising revenue to increase at least as much year over year in Q3 as it did in Q2. And after the pandemic is over, its ad business should surge a great deal as marketers look to capture consumers' pent-up demand for a wide variety of goods and services. I completely agree. I think Q3 will be quite impressive. I don't want to make any exact... Um, assumptions or estimates for q3's numbers but i think based on the whole situation with advertising sports returning some movies returning as well and some movie theaters actually opening up now i think snapchat's q3 will be significantly better than the results were in q2 and year over year i expect and hope that there is significant growth there so now we're going to talk about TikTok a little more since it is one of the biggest competitors. And on my last video about Snapchat, it's probably one of the most commented thing was everyone's using TikTok, Snapchat's dead. But that's not really the case at all. I think TikTok's facing a lot of criticism now. Um, Evan Spiegel, the CEO of Snapchat, is saying that TikTok's actually going to be a really difficult company to and it'd be really challenging to digest that, uh, it, you know, it's not coming with all the engineers that buying, you know, maybe a more local company will. Um, it's going to be a lot more difficult of a buy to maintain on top of that the ones that are trying to buy TikTok, like facebook and walmart especially or not facebook um microsoft and walmart well microsoft has a pretty bad history of purchasing uh you know kind of youth focused companies and then kind of just driving it right into the ground so it has a history of that and if it buys TikTok, i won't be surprised if that happens again so let's read through this really quickly Evan Spiegel, the chief executive at Snap, has said that any U.S. company will find TikTok really challenging to digest, playing down the idea that Snap had any interest in bidding for the viral video app's U.S. operations. For whoever purchases TikTok, it basically requires you to build the entire core technology from the ground up to support the service and to do so without any engineering talent and without the core technology. He added that the Snap t that Snap typically preferred to acquire companies together with their engineers and move and a, a move that may not be possible with TikTok. Typically, if you buy a business, it comes with a really talented team. And I think for us, the team is usually everything. So yeah, I can kind of agree with that. And again, I think TikTok is, or TikTok is a great browsing app and it might be taking some engagement time from Snapchat or some usage time from Snapchat. But in terms of users downloading Snapchat, I don't think it's decreasing that at all as we've seen from the numbers. Snapchat's increased its daily active users pretty consistently quarter over quarter for the past few quarters. And on top of that, uh, Snapchat, again, it's more of a communications device. And as TikTok faces more criticism, as people start to leave TikTok and go to other places, they're going to go to Instagram and they're going to go to Snapchat to spend more of their time. Since, you know, lockdowns are still going on around the whole country, people are bored, they want to use social media or talk to their friends. And well, you can't really talk to your friends unless you DM them awkwardly through Instagram. So, or, you know, Facebook messaging, whoever, you know, is, if, if you're, uh, you know, below the age of 20, you don't usually use Facebook that much anymore. So Snapchat is the next best place. And if Snapchat can somehow implement a browsing feature to keep people on the app more, maybe add some sort of profile feature to have more of a Instagram-like, I guess, way of increasing engagement and increasing usage for the app, it'll be very beneficial. And Snapchat will um, see an increase in advertising, an increase in advertising spending, and eventually will hopefully lead them to profitability and success in the future. So here's the summary. I highlighted in green some of the good things, orange, some of the you know average things or things that they might want to improve a little bit, and in red, some of the bad things. As you can tell, there's very little red that I've found, a little bit of orange, and a quite a decent amount of green here for my Snapchat Inc. summary. This is just an update video for Snapchat, not like a full analysis. I made videos in the past that were more of a full analysis videos. I'll make sure to put those at the end of the video here, or you can look them up on my channel as well. So great growth and fundamentals. This includes cash flow, daily active users, margins, cash, etc. Net income's not trending in the best direction, but I expect that to turn around in the near future. Uh, needs to monetize non-North American users. Almost all their revenue comes from uh, North American users, but the amount of users is divided up into thirds with North America, European, and the rest of the world. It's divided pretty much into thirds, but monetization is not divided into thirds like it seems like it should be. It's almost all North American users. They need to increase the ability to monetize non-North American users so they can profit from all those users. They, need, they have the ability to spread to more countries, such as attack more users, so a lot of potential growth there. They need to incorporate a better browsing feature to increase engagement, as I spoke about. 
advertising is very successful. I also talked about that, which will attract more ad spend. Uh, this is a kind of a random one that just was annoying me when using Snapchat. They need to improve the group chat feature. If anyone uses that, they have like a 30 or 35 person max. I don't know why they max out at that, uh, especially for times when a lot of college students want to make, you know, study group chats, whatever it may be. They definitely should incre uh, increase that feature. Not a huge negative. It's a random thing I've found with the app that's kind of bothersome. They need to incorporate profiles to the profile section. Almost all young people have Snap and are using it as a main source of communication. Anyways, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this kind of Snapchat update video. I think Snapchat is set up for success, whether it's a year from now, or whether it becomes profitable two years from now. Who knows? If they keep trending in the right direction, we'll only find out how they're doing when they release their quarterly results and more data. But I hope Snapchat continues doing well. I like the company. I really like the way they're innovating. I also really like that it's one of the very few social media slash communication apps that does not use likes and followers. Um, I think that's really cool and I think it's more healthy for people in general to not be, you know, obsessed with likes and followers and whatever it may be. I think it's cool that Snapchat doesn't include those in their app. Anyways, thanks for watching. Please subscribe, check out these videos, follow me on Twitter at Stalker Finance. And you can also, if you want to support the channel, check me out at patreon.com slash stalker finance. There's some goodies over there. See you in the next video. Peace out.